I only heard of that Michael Singer because Oprah Winfrey recommended this book to me personally. Sorry for the name drop. But like if Oprah Winfrey tells you to read something, you, you read that thing. I'm going to continue this series, Books That Changed My Life, if it kills me. I don't know why I didn't carry on with a book that really, really affected me and I really love this book, Untethered Soul, by Michael Singer, who's been on our podcast as a guest, talking about the book. I love that dude, Michael Singer. He's made wads of money out of like data, something I can't understand in computers. He's made loads of money and he started basically a community, which he said I can go visit one day. I only heard of that Michael Singer because Oprah Winfrey recommended this book to me personally. Sorry for the name drop. But like if Oprah Winfrey tells you to read something, you you read that thing. You get on and read it, whatever she says, really, isn't it? It's Oprah Winfrey. You might think, oh yeah, but she's so successful, I'm not gonna listen to her. Well you do as you're told. Like that's Oprah Winfrey, isn't it? That's like a royal family person, but that built their own monarchy out of themselves. So you gotta do as you're told. She told me to read it, I read it. It was impactful. It's a really well-written, beautiful book. Look at this quote on the front, Deepak Chopra. Read this book carefully and you will get more than a glimpse of eternity. Well, all right. And the cover on, the, the picture on the cover is a unicorn dashing about. So even my four-year-old would like it. She's bang into him. So look, the thing that I liked about him is that he's talking about a very simple and yet difficult to attain idea. He noticed one time that he felt awkward when chatting to a mate. He was, sister's boyfriend I think it was and he said he noticed that there was a moment where he was thinking about what to say and he thought what is this <laughs> what is this part of me is thinking about what to say and part of me is watching this process happen so I'm thinking what shall I say hey that's weird that I'm thinking that and he thought what will happen if I always watch that voice of thoughts like me I'm always thinking something I want this I want that I don't want that I wonder what that person wants I don't know what about the you know, it's just this chaos in there a racket Michael Singer's idea that he is communicating is a sort of an idea that's been communicated throughout spiritual tradition, really, like, I suppose, in Vedic or Buddhist literature, watch the thoughts, non-attachment. The non-attachment ain't only to external things, but to the point of attachment that occurs inwardly. Because if you are free within yourself, nothing external can get you. I've started to think myself, this phrase, don't think about the stimulus, think about the stimulation. Don't think about the person that's annoying you, think about the feeling that you're having in yourself because the person that's annoying you, they'll be gone. New people will come to annoy you. The feeling though, if you can watch the feeling, you can change. Now Michael Singer conveys these ideas in ways that I understood. If you want to get a real deep look at it, you should subscribe to Luminary and listen to the Michael Singer episode. Fantastic conversation. I felt the feeling that I was dealing with someone who's enlightened. Still with myself, I know I visit states of consciousness where I am free from the concerns of Russell, the human being. But I also spend a lot of time living in the concerns of Russell, the human being. Oprah Winfrey, when she gave me the command to read this book, and in fact sent me the book as a matter of fact, so it's actually a pretty nice thing, isn't it? She said, read chapters eight and nine. This bit in chapter nine is a bit that I'm gonna read you, and I think you're really gonna like it. He uses a metaphor, imagine you've got a thorn stuck in your body, or a splinter or whatever, right? What would your response be? You've got one option, pick it out, even though that hurts a bit. Or, yeah, well, let's go over to him. Imagine you have a thorn in your arm that directly touches a nerve. Whenever the thorn is touched, it's very painful because it hurts so much, the thorn is a serious problem. It's difficult to get to sleep because you roll over on it. It's hard to get close to people because they might touch it. It makes your daily life very difficult. You can't even go for a walk in the woods because you might brush the thorn against the branches. This thorn is a constant source of disturbance and to solve the problem you only have two choices. The first is to take a look at your situation and decide that since it's so disturbing when things touch the thorn you need to make sure that nothing touches it. The second choice is to decide that since it's so disturbing when things touch the thorn, take it out. Believe it or not, the effects of the choice you make will determine the course of the rest of your life. This is one of the core level structural decisions that lay at the, the foundation of your future. Bloody hell, core level foundational decisions that are going to affect the rest of my future. Tell me more. Let's begin with the first choice and explore how it will affect your life. If you decide to keep things from touching the fawn, then that becomes the work of a lifetime. If you want to go for a walk in the woods, you'll have to thin out the branches to make sure you don't brush against them. Since you often roll over and touch the fawn when you sleep, you'll have to find a solution for that and all. 
Perhaps you could design an apparatus that acts as a protective device. If you really put a lot of energy into it, your solution seems to work. You would think that you had solved the problem. You'd say, I can sleep now, and guess what? I've got to go on TV and give a testimonial. Anybody who has the thorn problem can get my protective device, and even I get paid royalties. So now you've got a whole life built around this thorn, and you're very proud of it. You keep the wood thinned out. You wear the apparatus to bed at night, but now you have a new problem. You fell in love. This is a problem because in your situation, it's hard even to hug. It's a really complex, but sort of also strong analogy, isn't it? Because it's like if the thorn in your life is you know, I don't trust people or I don't think I'm valuable, two problems I've had in my own life. It means that I do the equivalent of thinning out the woods, trying to change reality to suit me, building structures, egoic structures around my problems so people don't ever touch them. I'm even now doing a jiu-jitsu defense there if I was on the bottom, keeping the arms tight to make sure that I'm not touched, you know? Even though this is a fanciful analogy in some ways, it's also literally what we do. Think about your own life, your decisions that you make, the things you avoid doing. There's things that I avoid doing that are pretty simple and straightforward where I'm actually trying to protect myself because right? I've never taken the fall now. Where we left off, he was saying you might fall in love, so you design another device that allows you closeness amongst people without actually touching. Eventually you decide you want total mobility without having to worry about the fawn. So you make a full-time device that doesn't have to be unstrapped at night or changed for hugging and other daily activities, but it's heavy, so you put wheels on it and control it with hydraulics and install collision sensors. It's actually quite an impressive device. So like he's sort of saying that if you don't take that fawn out, the only way you're going to live contentedly is by building your whole life around that problem. He goes on about this in sort of considerable detail and he says that the same thing is obviously true of emotional fawns. You have the same two choices with inner forms as you do with the fawn in your arm. Surely it's obvious you would have been much better off rather than building that hydraulic machine, although it does sound quite good. So you've been better off just taking the fawn out. There's no reason to spend your life protecting the fawn from getting touched when you see when you see it, just remove it. Once the fawn is removed, you're truly free of it. The same is true with your inner fawns. They can be re removed, but if you choose to keep them without being disturbed by them, you must modify your life and avoid situations that will stir them up. If you're lonely, you must avoid going to places where couples tend to be. If you're afraid of rejection, you must avoid getting too close to people. If you do this, however, it's for the same reason you thinned out the woods. You're attempting to adjust your life to make allowances for your fawns. The alternative is to understand you can remove that thorn inside of you the same as you can remove it outside and if you remove it you will never have to think about it again and you can start to enjoy your entire life and that is spirituality so that's just like you know half a page of wisdom out of that book i found it to be very influential the other reason i like it is it's a bit like you know some of deepak chopra's writing or eckhart toll's power now is the message that a lot of that, although it's obviously explained in a new novel way for the new novel people of our time, this is an ancient message, isn't it? The idea of acknowledge these thorns or points of damage or erosion or invasion and bring attention to them and be willing to let go of them, surrender. Me, I'm an advocate of a 12-step program and in my book, Recovery, what I talk about is how, whether it's with drugs, or sex or relationships or food or anything in your life if you admit it's a problem believe it's possible to change ask for help you can get on a journey of changing yourself the spiritual journey is necessary it's important it's the only answer the material world just gives you opportunities to create the create the kind of apparatus and machinery that michael singer was talking about oh if i had enough status if i had enough money you know and i've tried these methods to solve my own problems now what I've come to recognise is that the only solution is to journey within. And whenever I notice myself returning to my old tendencies, I have to avert it, I have to amend it, I have to return to the spiritual truth. If you want to hear me talk more about that, you can get my Audible original. The uh, order codes are here in the description. Don't feel obliged if you can't afford it or if you just don't want it. Remember, you can sign up to be a member of my Nexus mailing list alliance and get free videos sent here every week and access to live events that I do online, all totally free. But if you want my book, Revelation, get it. If you want to sign up for my podcast, sign up for it. Basically, what I'm saying is if you can afford the stuff to pay for, do. If you can't, enjoy the free stuff. I'll keep doing both.
So that was Untethered Soul, one of the books that influenced me, that made me think the way I think. And if you enjoyed this series, series, let me know in the comments and let me know what other books you'd like to see me talk about. Other ones I might consider is like Viktor Frankl's book about man's search for meaning. God, there's some Oscar Wilde's children's books that I'd be really interested in talking about, but I can go off in all sorts of directions. Thanks. I'll be headlining the vegan camp out in Nottingham on the 21st of August. And with the recent government update, the event is definitely going ahead in August. 60% of tickets have now been sold, so you'll have to be quick. Head over to vegancampout.co.uk to get your tickets. I'll be there talking about veganism and the implications of veganism and how I'm a vegan in the modern world. Remember, everyone's welcome to come, not just vegans. There's something for everyone to enjoy. There'll be various talks, live music, yoga, meditation, and of course, amazing vegan food. Chris Packham, Benjamin Zephaniah, and many more will be there too. Visit vegancampout.co.uk to buy your tickets, and I'll see you there in Nottingham.